Hello and welcome to the introduction of our tutorial on easy ancestor programming. I am Javier Romero and in this section I want to have a first look to this easy approach to ancestor programming. I hope you like it. Let's start with a quick review of ancestor programming which is this approach for declarative problem solving. If we go backwards here we can say that it's for solving problems declaratively. That is, we want to declare the problems, we want to describe the problems, and we do not want to tell the computer how to solve them, we just want to describe them. And how this works is described in this nice picture here. So we start with some problem we want to solve, then we model it with a logic program. And then we solve this and we obtain some answers. And this solving is performed by a piece of software called a solver. And this gives us these answer sets here that we can easily interpret as solutions to our original program. And this is, sorry, to our original problem. And this is how this works. So now let's see some examples of this work. Let's consider first the university timetabling problems where on the one side, we have some courses with associated lectures and some teachers that could teach those lectures. And on the other side, we have some time slots and rooms. And then the problem is to assign the lectures of the courses to the time slots and rooms, such that certain conditions are satisfied. For example, we don't want to have a teacher who is teaching two courses at the same time, or we don't want to have two courses that are assigned to the same room because that would be a conflict, that would not work. Hence, what I have told you now is what is this problem of university timetable? Then we can model it with a logic program and that is what we will do as users of ancestor programming. And then we will push the button and the solver will give us answer sets that then we will interpret as possible timetables for our university. This is how we would use it. We write the logic program, we solve it, and we obtain a timetable for our university. Now, another problem that perhaps is more um, directly related, related to the life of students is the semester plan. So you start the semester and you see in your curriculum that you have all these courses available, all these courses you could take, and these courses some have some lectures that you should take and you also have some kind of requirement on the number of courses that you should take or normally it's the number of credits that, that, uh, that your, your courses should amount to. You know? But yes, I think you get the idea. And then you also have some preferences like the courses that you like the most, the teachers that you like the most, or you may also have other kind of preferences like saying, well, in the same day, I don't want to have two courses at different campuses or things like that. So then the problem is to select a good plan for, your, for this semester, select a good set of courses that fit into this requirement of the number of credits that you have and that agree with your preferences. So this will be then the description of the problem. Then you could model it via logic program and this is this could be a simple program to write and then you push the bottom and the solver gives you some answer set and this answer set actually is a solution that is that to your problem and this solution will tell you which courses you should choose to satisfy your preferences and still fit into this credit requirement right so these were two examples of answer set programming but if you think a bit more about this, you have already been doing this for, for many years. So remember the first problems that you could solve when you started studying mathematics. Let's consider a very simple one. You have six apples. Then you give three to a friend and two to another. How many apples are left? Just think about how you would solve that problem and how does it fit in this picture? I'll give you five seconds for that. So the way I see it, maybe this were in five seconds, okay, I'll give you two more. 
Okay, the way I see it is as follows. I have just told you the description of the problem, right? That you had six apples initially and then you gave three to one person and two to another. And then you want to know how many apples are left. That's the description of the problem. Then to model it, you would write a mathematical expression saying something like the apples that are left are equal to six minus three minus two. And then you would solve that expression. Normally at the school, you would do it by hand, but you could imagine that you could also use a calculator for that, of course. And that's what you actually would do if the problem was more complicated. And then you get the number one, which is what the what what you get from the mathematical expression, and you would interpret it as saying that you are left with one apple. So you see, then we had the problem, you represent it by an expression, and then you got the solution just working mathematically on the problem, and this you could interpret as a real solution for your, your problem. And actually, what happens is that here in answer set programming, we will be using these sophisticated solvers that are more complicated than the normal calculators that we have been using in the school. But basically, they, they fulfill a similar, <clears throat> a similar role. And then the big difference is here because the logic programs are really, really a nice formalism to express problems. And in fact, they extend they are a kind of, they are an extension of arithmetics. Then for us as users of answer set programming, we see that everything revolves around modeling our problems, right? And for modeling the problem properly, we need to understand well what is a logic program and what are the answer sets of the logic program. So that afterwards we can simply push the bottom and let the solvers give us the answer sets that are the solutions to the problems we wanted to solve. And with this modeling is where easy answer set programming comes into play. This is a methodology that focuses on this part. And it has two main contributions. The first one is that it provides us with an easy way to understand logic programs and their answer sets. So it helps us here to understand what is a logic program and what are the answer sets of a logic program. And closely related to this, it provides us with an easy recommendation on how to write logic program that is quite natural given this understanding of logic programs. Good, then before we move on, let me introduce for those of you who don't know this acronym for answer set programming, which is ASP. And in the tutorial, I will be usually talking about this easy ASP. So let's have a look at how this introduction section is going to look like. First, we will have a look at some very simple examples where we will have a first look at this ECASP and then we will go extending these examples first with variables, then with recursion. And here in this section on recursion and negation, we will see what happens when we have these two features, recursion and negation. And then I will give you a very a quick summary here of everything we have seen along the way. Then let's move to the section on examples.